everyone, welcome back. In this video, I will walk you through the anatomy of the aorta and its branches. I will explain the associated pathologies as well as the answers to yesterday's Instagram quiz. Let's get started. If you want to test yourself, pause this video right now and try to label the structures shown in this picture. This is the aorta. The aorta has three parts the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the descending aorta. The branches of the aorta are as simple as the ABCs, quite literally. A stands for the aorta, B stands for the brachiocephalic trunk, C stands for common carotid artery, and S is the left subclavian artery. In anatomy, whenever you hear the word brachio, it should remind you of the arm. Cephalic refers to the head. So, the brachiocephalic trunk gives rise to the right subclavian artery, which goes to the arm, and the right common carotid artery, which goes to the head. The common carotid artery splits into the external and internal carotid arteries. The external supplies the face and internal supplies the brain. It's the same on the left side as well. Question number 2. Differential cyanosis is seen in Option A. Coarctation of the aorta in adults Option B. Tetralogy of fluid Option C. Carotid artery stenosis Option D. Patent ductus arteriosus The answer to this question is patent ductus arteriosus. Differential cyanosis occurs because the oxygen saturation is higher in the upper part of the body as compared to the lower part. This will lead to cyanosis here while the upper part remains relatively normal. Ductus arteriosus is a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery in the fetus. Due to increased oxygen at birth, the ductus arteriosus closes and becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. If the ductus arteriosus fails to close, it remains patent. In such cases, blood can flow from the aorta to the pulmonary artery. This is because the pressure in the aorta is higher than that in the pulmonary artery. But if this lasts for a very long time, there will be a fluid overload in the pulmonary arteries and the right heart. So, the pressure will increase here, resulting in a reversal of the shunt. This increases the flow of deoxygenated blood into the descending aorta. Since the mixing happens here, the structures which receive blood from the descending aorta will have less oxygen supply. The subclavian and the carotids will not receive the deoxygenated blood. So, the upper part is unaffected. Coarctation of the aorta also has the potential to cause differential cyanosis. But this is more common in children. This is because in children, the coarctation is preductile. That is, the constriction of the aorta happens before the ductus arteriosus. Due to the low resistance here, blood from the pulmonary artery flows this way and causes cyanosis in the lower parts of the body. In adults, the coarctation is postductile, that is, after the ductus arteriosus. So, the resistance out here is higher, so the blood will not flow from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. Hence, differential cyanosis will not be found in such cases. To memorize this, remember that preductile is for pediatric cases and coarctation after the ductus arteriosus is seen in adults. Cyanosis in case of the tetralogy of fluid is seen when the patient is squatting, crying or is doing a physical activity. I have explained the mechanism in detail in this video. Carotid artery stenosis is not associated with differential cyanosis. Question number 3. The greatest risk factor for aortic dissection is Option A. Diabetes Option B. Hypertension Option C. Hyperlipidemia The answer to this question is hypertension. When the blood flows at a very high pressure, it has the potential to tear this layer of the aorta. 
Blood enters the media layer of the aorta, leading to the formation of a false lumen. The accumulation of blood can proceed to form an aneurysm. As you can imagine, the blood must flow under immense pressure in order to break the intimal layer. This is why hypertension is the greatest risk factor for aortic dissection. We will complete this video with a case. A 60-year-old male presents with dizziness while exercising. He has also been experiencing left arm fatigue with exertion. The right upper extremity is normal. What is the most likely cause of this patient's condition? Option A, coarctation of the aorta. Option B, internal carotid artery stenosis. Option C, aortic stenosis. Option D, subclavian artery occlusion. The answer to this question is subclavian artery occlusion. In subclavian artery occlusion, there is a block here. So, blood flowing to the left arm is reduced. This results in the left arm fatigue that our patient is experiencing. The vertebral artery and the basilar artery supply the brain. Due to this block, there is very little flow here. So, the resistance out here is very low. So, blood will flow from the vertebral artery into the subclavian. This results in low blood supply to the brain and hence causes dizziness. It's almost like the left subclavian steals blood from the right vertebral and basilar arteries. That's why this is known as subclavian steal syndrome. Coarctation of the aorta will not have symptoms of dizziness. Internal carotid artery stenosis will not affect the arm. Aortic stenosis can present with dizziness, but a combination of dizziness with left arm fatigue on exertion is more likely due to subclavian artery stenosis. I hope this video was useful. Comment below to show me your support. It will really encourage me to make more videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for med quizzes, videos, study tips, and clinical experiences. Thank you for watching.